picked up this tool right here. Nine millimeter casing for Interestingly enough, my number one video uh, viewed to date is my arrows making video for all of the bows that I make. That's the number one video. Um, I'm going to drop a card right here. You can check it out, guys, as to how I take my uh, cedar wood. They're not shafts here. They're, they're square cut is what they are. They're 3 8 by 3 8 inch square. And then uh, round them out into shafts. But... For these shafts, I actually did something a little different. I changed up my process for, uh, you know, doweling them out. And we're going to cover that in just a moment. I also did some upgrades to the spine testing uh, jig that I have. Uh, nothing has changed with the way it was constructed, but there is a, a very specific change uh, that was made in order to be more accurate with these arrows that have a little lighter spine uh, than say a hunting weight arrow. So um, for those bows that are made in 40 pounds draw or less, you want to have a good uh, spined arrow that's going to uh, work with that particular bow, uh, as well as be a light weight, uh, you know, light in terms of a grain weight so that you get good movement out of a lightweight bow. Uh, so in my original video about making shafts, I used this uh, shooting board and uh, what I did was I picked up this tool right here guys I'll put a link in the description down below where you can you can go on Amazon and pick this up I don't remember exactly what I paid for because I actually got it quite some time ago um, but I want to say it was like 20 bucks or less uh, and the way I did this I did not just go straight into the 3 8 inch uh, doweling hole here we started down here at the 7 16 right and worked that and then went to the 3 8 all right we want to be careful chucking this uh shaft into our our drill in that we don't want to grind up the uh, wood and uh, being cedar, it will easily tear up. Um, I got it rounded just enough right there to get a good start here. And what we're gonna do is just, just start it, right? Because we wanna make sure that it finishes okay. So we're we're going to be down here now, knowing that we've got something of a start down here. And then we're going to finish everything off like so. All right. All right. It popped off my thing. Now it's basically just taking the corners off. And you can see that it's, it's pretty torn up. And that's why, that's why I start at the 7 sixteenths inch size. All right, so here we go. I have adjusted it now to the 3 8 inch mark. I'm going to chuck this guy up again. And just like we did last time around, we're just going to get a start. Here, that it's given us a nice circular or dowel like uh, finish. And then we're going to continue on for the rest of the shaft here. And that gives us our rough shaft right there. Hopefully you can see this. 
right? So that is a 3 8 inch shaft, which is um, a wider diameter than we're going to need for any arrows that we're doing, you know, at, at least traditionally speaking. Okay, I have once again chucked up the uh, shaft here. I got some drywall um, abrasive here, like drywall paper, sandpaper that has this, this kind of mesh look to it. And the reason that I use that paper in this jig is so that the... Um, all of the dust that, that accumulates in the course of sanding these shafts, it goes into that, into that mesh and comes out of here a little bit easier. And what I am using here is a jig that when the two halves are put together, this is a three eighths inch hole right here. And this is a half inch. I use the half inch because once you put the paper in there, it, it pretty much reduces it to less than an eighth of an inch, or not an eighth, but three-eighths of an inch uh, setup. All right, so I'm going to get this situated on the shaft of the arrow, just like so, and, and just sand it. Well, a few times down, and I want to say that that paper that I'm using is, it may be 80 grit. It may be 80. I'm not 100% sure. 80 or 120, or 100 rather. Look at how smooth that is now. So that has really smoothed out that shaft. All right. And that's the point at which we turn to actual paper. I have here some 100 grit garnet. I'll go with the new surface here. And this is a much lighter application, you guys. And you'll see that it, it just builds so much dust in there. All right. That if you're not careful, or if you put a lot of pressure in it, it'll ruin your paper very quickly. So the idea is to kind of change up direction on there and not um, uh, not use too much pressure. And you'll know when you're using too much pressure because you'll feel the heat. You'll feel the heat starting to build up in there. Here we are. See how smooth that is? And this has basically been filmed real time, you guys. Like this, it did not take from, from going through here to getting the, the rough paper to getting the smoother paper and then we can finish it out of course with like 220 if we want to get it really nice and smooth uh, i tend not to put quite that much into the shafts just yet uh, because i want to spine them out spine measuring station here and i wanted to show something specifically these are very very light weight shafts and just to even get this thing to rest in place, can you see the deflection that occurs there? Like this is happening before it ever even actually begins to measure with a weight, you know, in place. So I got to hang another two pounds weight to get our deflection. But I'm already getting a little bit of downward pressure as a result of the spring on this piston. Uh, and I was talking to a, a friend of mine who had actually removed that spring so that only gravity would be, uh, or the only, the only force bringing this piston down would in fact be gravity. All right, I've gone ahead and loosened the screws here to 
get in here. And this is going to be easier than I thought. You can see the spring right here. See the spring right there? All we gotta do is unhook that spring. Um, that was even easier than I thought. I just got in here with a pair of needle nose pliers and unhooked that spring. I should have just filmed it when I did it. So it wasn't very difficult at all. And now this is strictly uh, governed by gravity. So this is going to be perfect for uh, measuring arrows without getting a false reading. Now let's see how that deflection works on a shaft. Oh, now, now you can see it's not it's not pushing down on that shaft at all. As a matter of fact, the shaft is pushing it back up. So we're going going to get much more accurate uh, readings this way. So let's take a test spin here. Got a two pound weight. Collection is 0.72, puts us right in here between 35 and 40 per, uh, 35 and 40 pound range, and closer to the 35, which is perfect because that is the weight of this bow. So our goal with this particular set of arrows is to make a very um, light physical weight arrow. Um, we're looking for maximum uh, maximizing our speed out of a lightweight bow. Um, so part of that is some lightweight material. And this, these are cedar shafts. Um, they are spined incredibly light, all right? So they're spined in that 30 to 40 pound range, which means they will bend around, the, um, around that bow in their state as they are. Uh, so in order to help that, we need uh, we need tips that are not going to unnecessarily augment the uh, deflection of that arrow shaft. So a heavy, a heavy tip will do two negative things to our arrows. One, it'll force it to bend more than its uh, spine would suggest, right? So it'll take like a 40, like the heavier the weight, the spine bends easier, if that makes sense, right? Because it's forced to bend behind the weight of a very heavy tip. The other thing a heavy tip will do is make the entire setup heavier, and, and we do not want a heavy arrow. We want as light an arrow as possible. And for that reason, uh, we're going to be using some 9 millimeter uh, bullet shells. All right, so this is a, this is a casing, a 9 millimeter bullet. Uh, there is, in fact, quite a bit of material in here uh, that does not preclude it from being able to uh, sand down to a small tip. All right. Uh, so I've got it set up on a hot, on a shaft piece right here, where I can uh, then run it against the belt and keep everything circular. I suppose I could chuck it like this and, you know, do this. All right. So there you can see we've got a bullet tip, uh, ironically enough, out of the casing of a bullet. So now we can use this tip to then put on our arrows. And what that'll do is, A, it'll give us, it'll give us a little bit of forward momentum, but it gives us the penetration uh, piece and a little bit of forward uh, weight on that shaft. Just a little, because these, uh, 
these tips end up being somewhere in the neighborhood of like 40 grains. I've had them come out as, as light as like 38 grains, as heavy as like 42. Um, and you can come back to the sander or the grinder and, and take off a little bit more if you want to get them all matched exactly. It's the last piece of the puzzle for our shafts. So um, what I have right here is a 3 8 inch rope pulley. Um, a hangover from, from doing work on uh, tillering trees. So uh, I've got some extra pulleys kicking around. But we want our shaft to roll smoothly on a flat surface. And this shaft pretty much does. Uh, but we're going to use this as an arrow straightener. And what we do is we sight down the shaft and where we find a bend, okay, any kind of bend that is, is occurring in our shaft. And we're going to situate the crown of that bend sitting up. I got a little something going on. Just got to find it. Like right down here. And get the crown of that bend sitting up on the table. And you're going to compress the fibers on the opposite side. And what that does is like pull it into uh, straight. All right, and so in all of your shafts, if you take a little, little bit of time, especially when they're new, to know where they've got little kinks in there, and you roll it out with a you know, uh, pulley like this, and you end up with nice straight shafts. The weight of that tip is 40 grains. Remember that the uh, spine on these arrows is like right there at between 35 and 40 pounds. So we don't want anything that's going to force any extra flex. So a light tipped arrowhead is going to work perfectly here. Um, we're up to 316 grains with the shaft. Got a knock point on there to 330. And I'm going to put three feathers on here with the whole works. And the weight of these arrows should finish out right there in the neighborhood of three, you know, 340 to 350 grains. So very flat trajectory on those arrows. Whew. That one acted up. Take a couple more shots. Yeah. Thank you for joining me uh, along the course of this particular build. We'll get started with a new one here right away.